Hello, and welcome to Great Hang, the greatest hang that's ever hanged. I'm your hang, Tim McLaughlin, coming to you with your other hang. Tim McLaughlin? It's a solo show today. Gang, Micah has been caught up at work for like the last two weeks, and today is no different. She's busy as hell. She's not going to be able to make it home till late. And then, out of the blue, she was invited to a Broadway play with podcasting superstar Timothy Dillon. So Mike is also going to be hanging out with Tim Dillon tonight. And I, I mean, who? what kind of a boyfriend would I be if I said no? No, you can't go hang out with your incredibly rich friend. That would be bad. I can't do that. But I do feel hamstrung today. It really sucks. I, You know, my powers on this show are to be annoying and to annoy Micah. And now I have no one to annoy. I can't, I have, I have absolutely no one to bother. And I guess I can imagine that I'm bothering the audience and I'm annoying the audience and audience isn't that a great time. So let's start it out. I'll do it again. Annoying style. Uh, Wait, shit. See, this is the part where Micah dogs me for my brain not working. She'll go, buh, buh, uh, did your brain turn off? Did your brain turn off, stupid? Maybe I can do both of us today. But uh, let's try it again. Hello, and welcome to Great Hang, the greatest hang that's ever hanged. I'm your Hank Tim McLaughlin, coming to you with your other hang, the audience. How are you? Okay, that feels pretty natural. That's pretty annoying. I feel pretty annoying now. Uh, I've got a little bit of a sore throat. I've been on the road. Uh, myself and uh, Patreon subscriber Tom Takar, we were in Grand Rapids, Michigan all weekend. And now, something happened to us. It People would call it a butt fucking. We may have gotten butt fucked. By a gentleman, a, 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 a famous country musician, a country superstar, and a legendary country superstar by the name of Alan Jackson was performing one of his five tour dates Saturday in Grand Rapids, basically right next to where we were performing. So if you wanted to come downtown to Grand Rapids and have a nice time, it was almost impossible if you weren't going to the Alan Jackson show. So he kind of hamstrung us. He's a piece of shit. And I hope his neurological disease takes him quicker than uh, it, it you could have ever imagined. But other than that, we had a really fun weekend. We went, we, we got, we popped off. We straight up popped off and we went to Steakhouse Lunch at Butcher's Union, it was incredible. We got, what did we get? What the fucking shit did we fucking get? We got a wedge salad, which this wedge salad wasn't like a traditional wedge salad. It was like, um, it was Caesar salad dressing with tangerines and something, I mean, it had croutons, of course, and then like something else. But the Caesar salad with the uh, bitter lettuce that they had and the tangerines was like, it was incredible. It was really, really good. And then we also got shrimp burrata, which was very, very good. And then we both had uh, prime rib sandwiches made from Wagyu prime rib. And then Tom had three Manhattans at lunch. So it was a nice time. It was a very nice time. I also had three uh, Miller High Lifes because I live the high life and so the champagne of beers is not too nice for me. I think I, I deserve the finer things in life. So it was fun. It was really fun. We had a great time in Grand Rapids. Uh, I love the city. The people were great. The shows were really fun. Um, actually, the shows were kind of fun. I I had one rough one. I had one rough one where I just didn't do as well as I wanted to. I don't know why. Maybe I was a little off. Maybe I was too on. I don't know if you can be too on, but I was possibly too on for the show. But so I had one rough one, but that's not bad. And then, uh, you know, but the other shows were great. Everybody was great in Grand Rapids. Um, I possibly, this is boring, but I took Tom to the airport Sunday morning at 530. And then I got back to Indianapolis, which is a four-hour drive. So I pick up Tom, take him to the airport. So that's an out-of-the-way kind of thing. Not that out-of-the-way. It's a little on the way, but it, you go east, and then you have to come back west. 
So I get to the airport, take Tom to the airport, pick him up at 530. I, I think I've already said that a few times. Um, oh, tell the story. Tell it. Tell the Just tell them the story. No one cares what time you picked him up. Just tell it. So I get him, and I get home before 10 a.m. I get I got back with a stop, with a stop. I got back to Indianapolis at 9.45 in the morning. A true, absolute, incredible time made on the road. It was thrilling. I got home. I got out of the car. I felt like I was MFing Superman. I was like, look at me, MFers, I kept saying to myself. So that was pretty cool. Um, also, uh, my flight got delayed three hours on the way to Indianapolis. So everyone bounced off my flight, and I got re-upgraded to first class. And then this morning, I've just gotten back to town, by the way. I just got back to town. I set all this up. I'm doing the solo show for you guys. Don't worry. A Patreon will be out later this week. We screwed up. Mike has been so busy, and I forgot to pre-record one, but we will have one out later this week. And if you guys want to check out any of our extra content that we have, you can go to patreon.com slash great hang, of course, where we have all our live shows. We have extra shows every week. It's super fun. It's me and Micah. We play games. Micah yells at me. Sorry. Sometimes we get in like legitimate fights. Sometimes we get in like real fights on the show. So it's pretty fun. If you want to hear us like actually fight, not like when there's a guest here and it's a little more muted. Sometimes we'll get in like a legitimate fight and I will post it. And it, and Micah doesn't particularly like that I do that, but I put them up anyways. Fuck it. It's content, baby. My life is content. Call me the Truman show, bitch. So I get, I'm, this more so yesterday I'm two of two on the first class upgrade list. There's two seats. I'm number two. I look at my phone this morning. I'm number three. I'm bumped down to three. The two people above me get upgraded to first class. And I'm not kidding, minutes before my flight starts boarding, a third seat in first class opens and the kid is on first class again. Seven First class flights this year, seven. I may, I don't make a living wage. I think I'm going to make under like $20,000 this year. And I've been, and I've flown seven times first class. No one in my tax bracket is flying that much in first class. Not one. If there is anyone else in this, I'd love to meet them. I'd love to meet the other person who's living the kind of life I live, where they don't make a living wage, but they're flying first class. It's incredible. And I think the other first class people can smell it on me. I think they, they see me walk, they, they see me about to sit down. They go, oh no, he doesn't. This isn't for him. We can't believe it. He's up here. But I got first class again. It was pretty awesome, pretty happy about it. So that was pretty good. And now I'm here recording with you guys. I got to see my little niece over the weekend. My little niece, I posted it on Instagram. So if you want to check it out, you want to check out a video of me interacting with my niece, it's at hot underscore comic 69. I'm pointing at things. She's naming them. She's very cute. Her name's Shermit, and everybody loves her. She's a very cute little sweet girl. So that was exciting. And I just had a nice fun time in Indianapolis. Shout out to Alex Price and Black Circle Brewing for an incredibly fun show Sunday. Uh, all right. Well, we've done it. We've gone about eight minutes. I've already done two plugs. I know we're probably not going to go very segment heavy today because I don't really have anyone to do segments with, but I do. I did come up with an idea for the episode. I didn't come in empty handed and I'm not going to do like what I did on the Patreon when I had to go solo and just kind of call people hoping they pick up, even though we still might do that. I don't know if we will or won't, but we still might. But uh, what we're going to do today is I realized when we did the Vail Comedy Festival, we pre-recorded four episodes, and then we released the episodes, but we never did an episode afterwards where we read the comments. And I know we read the comments for every episode and we go to, you know, we go to Apple, we go to Apple iTunes, make sure to see if we have any five-star reviews. And if you're listening to this on Apple iTunes, leave us a five-star review. We would absolutely love it. It helps the freaking 
algorithm and pushes us up the charts. And we just like to hear from you in general. Um, also on Spotify, I got to look for the last episode to see if there were any comments left on Spotify, but I didn't read any of the YouTube comments for any of the Vail Comedy Festival shows. So I figure, what is this show if it isn't just reading the comments? And I'd like to do it when there's a guest here because it's so annoying. It's so annoying to another person to read comments not about them. So I would, I would, I really wished a guest was here, but uh, that's okay. I couldn't get anyone last minute, and Mike, you know, but that's all right. The, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this week's latest episode, or the last episode with Irene Morales on Spotify. See if there are any comments. There are not. There are not any comments. Let's run down a few of these. Jews for Germany, no comments. Copyright infringement, no comments. So there's no comments on there. Sorry if I'm a little stuffed up. I think my I think my niece gave me some kind of baby sickness, so I, I probably have the croup or thrush or some type of baby disease, uh, but uh, yeah, so sorry if I'm a little stuffed up, sorry if I'm sniffling a little bit, that's my bad gang. All right, so let's go to Apple iTunes and see if we have any new five-star reviews on Apple. Uh, we don't, but that's okay because now we can get to YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, like subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Yo, you got to smash that like button, smash that like, hit that bell. We need to see you out here, but also leave a comment. We will read it. So here we are all the way back two months ago. And we're coming from the episode of Coming Out as a Cusser with Mary Mack and Tim Harmstrom. Mary Mack uh, from Solar Opposites, a show I like, and Tim Harmstrom from being very good at comedy. So let's see what we got here. Sean from Pittsburgh says, Mary's got a voice like a northern bell. She really does. And we do talk about southern bells, and I guess it is more... Uh, more um, inviting voice than the high-pitched uh you know minnesota type of voice but a northern bell is nice ton tons more cowbell says more zumok talk tons more cowbell i'm not getting in with the mud shark brother i can't be doing that i can't be swimming around in the mud with the mud shark i wish hey to everyone in the dabble verse i wish you well i gotta keep my nose clean of it it's just not for me I like, hey, I'll watch. I'll participate. I'll participate in the sense that I will watch and I like the stuff that they do, but you can't be, I can't be dipping my toes into the damn dabble verse. First of all, Micah would not like the dabble verse. She would find it very stupid and she wouldn't have fun. I guess I could do my own solo show there, but no more Zumok talk. And uh, that's from Micah. Wilford Padawa's number one fan. One thing I love about the Great Hang universe is discovering all these hysterical folks that never came across my radar. Reminds me of very early Real Ass Podcast 10 years ago with randoms and unknowns when Micah would appear and ruthlessly tear into Zach about his weight and, his, and how hideous he is. Zach is beautiful on the outside and in. And I bet if we cooked him, he'd taste pretty good, too. Relentlessly nonstop for the whole episode to where it becomes genuinely uncomfortable. Anyways, love from Dublin. As in Dublin, my dose of hysterical Tims and adorable foxy ladies. This great hang of an ep. Oh, great. Well, thank you, Wilfred Padua's number one fan. Just Us Reads says, what the fuck, dogs? I wanted my comment from last week read aloud in Vail. Oh, well, Micah did say the F-slur, shall we not forget? And we shall never forget that Micah said the F-slur. And she called Red Bar the F-slur, which I thought was a bad move. You don't want to get on Red Bar's bad side, you know? Red Bar, shout out to Red Bar, king of all uh, haters. I love you very much, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of you. And I hope that you do not turn your ire towards us. Uh, LJ1 says... Just two vibed with the hang. These two vibed with uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, bro, you can't read. Oh, dummy can't read. These two vibed with the hang nicely. Goo approved. 
and then shooting emoji, and then salute emoji. Now, I don't know if we should put salute emojis in with gooing because of the don't ask, don't tell. Um, I don't know if this is asking or telling or if it's actually gay, but I just think we should keep our military separate from the goo gang. The goo army can possibly go to war with the United States Army. That may, in fact, happen at some point, but... Until we've crusted our arm, uh, until we've crusted our armor up to the point where we can barely walk, then we cannot go into battle with the U.S. Army. Alan Thicknick says, "This was so much fun. I knew I heard Mary's voice somewhere before." Chris and Fremantle said, "Was unsure about this one until until Tim's amazing three-page play, and then a bunch of Jewish stars." Thank you. I, I should have wrote, written a monologue, a one-man monologue today. I didn't even think about it. I was like, I'll just save my play energy for next week. Th sound off in the comments about this, or you can just kind of message me or whatever. Would you guys like it? Well, I guess none of you really live in New York, but I was thinking about maybe we could do a live show where I take all of my former plays and I make people do them on stage. I think that might be kind of fun. I don't know if anyone would want that, but shout out in the comments if you would want that. Of course I would film it. I'm not doing anything if content isn't being made. So it would be made, probably go on the Patreon, but it would. I know for sure it would end up on uh, the free feed as well. So, shout, so let me know if you guys want to see that. It's an idea I've been toying with. I think I need to write... I think I need like 10 more plays to like make it long enough to be a show. And I feel like only three of them right now are probably good enough to do in front of an audience. And by audience, I mean, I haven't been able to get anyone to see anything lately. So uh, who even knows what will happen? But that's just an idea I've been having. Miriam Zapata said, oh, my God, she's Jesse. That's where I heard her voice from. So cute. And that has a response from Alan Thicktick. I had the exact same thought, LOL. I couldn't figure out why she sounded so familiar. Uh-oh. Ah, fuck. I clicked out. Hold on, I'm coming back. Oh, uh, we're back. And we're back. And then, finally, Ronson File said, Good Lord, Mary's voice is music. It's like pouring honey in my ears. Shout out to Mary Max. Shout out to Tim Harmstrom. Thank you very much. For doing the pod at the Vail Comedy Festival with the Great Hang Podcast. All right, next one we've got is Will This Save Your Career with Jenny Zagrino. Jenny Zagrino, shout out to Jenny Zagrino, one of my favorite people. I love Jenny very much. Uh, I'll never forget when she stayed at my house and complained about her career and then was in a movie two days later. So that was pretty cool. Um, but here we go. Ronson File says 3328. Tim gets no respect for this halibut pun. Disgraceful. They just, the, the women just don't, they don't want to give it to. Here's the problem with comedy recently, and this is, and it's and it's less the PC police. And the PC police, of course, are ruining comedy and are shooting uh people of color when they do comedy. The PC police are, but also, women kind of don't want men to succeed anymore, and women are, like, doing everything they can to stop a man from succeeding. And as, like, the funny man on the show, the two women on the show just didn't want to give it to me. And I could sense it. I could feel it while it was happening. And I was like, this is so crazy. These two are so wildly rude for this. I can't even believe it. But that's what was happening at the time. I remember it perfectly. Um... So here we go. I don't know. Shit is happening on my phone, and it is popping off. I have to. I have to turn on my do not do not. I gotta turn on my do not disturb. Oh, that'd be good, Medea. Do not disturb. Anyways, that's that's Medea turning on her do not disturb on her phone. I gotta turn on my do not disturb. All right. Seth Miller says, this is my new favorite podcast. I've recently traded Jeff Sheen for Micah. Oh, I wish Micah was here. She would have loved to hear this because I love how mean she is. And Jeff makes me uncomfortable. He makes everyone uncomfortable. He's a fucking weirdo in a way I can't exactly describe. I can describe it. It's like it's sexual, but also like like autistic it's like an autistic sexuality that you don't know where it's coming from and it's gross he's like bill maher but gross 
and even Bill Maher, and Bill Maher has been trying to riz up chicks on his show. Like, I, I hold on one second, gang. Um, okay, got it. Like, Bill Maher had the Hawk Tua girl on. I know he had the Hawk Tua girl on recently. I don't know if you guys saw Bill Maher with the Hawk Tua girl, but I watched the Re- I watched Red Bar talk about it, and boy, oh boy, cringe-inducing. Great video. Check out the Red Bar video of that. It's absolutely fantastic, but it is cringy, baby. I, I do wish I was a hot chick sometimes so that people would give me some fucking respect in this world, but my hair is eventually going to be all white, and I'll finally get the respect that I've been owed. Um, oh, and also I jizzed everywhere and stuff too. Oh, good. I'm glad you jizzed everywhere and stuff. Oh, Micah said, this is an A plus comment. Everyone take notes. <laughs> so she did see it. Oh, good. I'm glad Micah saw it. Uh, Sean from Pittsburgh says Tim's play feels too close to reality and it's great. Hashtag goo gang. Thank you. Huzon says the year is 2001. I learned to bust. Hashtag Goo Gang. Shout out to you, Huzon, for busting for the last 23 years. I'm proud of you. I wish you many, many more years of busting in the future. Miriam Sabeta said, this pot is criminally underrated. Miriam, I couldn't agree with you more. Everyone, here's what I want you to do. Not this episode. This episode is a bad example. Take your favorite episode of the pod, go on social media, and just share it and say everyone should listen to this. <laughs> I know none of you were going to do that because I would not do that, but I would. it would build up our numbers probably for some fucking reason or another. So I'll check it. But either way, keep commenting, keep listening. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I've been popping off for 22 minutes straight, just straight up talking. I've been killing it. I'm doing an incredible job. It's what I have to tell myself when no one is here. When no one's here and you're playing to know, I don't know how Tim Dillon and Bill Burr do this. This is like, I'm like, am I being funny? I don't know if I'm being funny. I hope I'm being funny. So I hope I'm being funny for you guys. I hope that reading the comments isn't too monotonous. I'm just, you know... I love you guys so much for listening to the pod, and I really appreciate all of you. And I, I didn't want to put out another Patreon episode because it's just you guys deserve f- like real good. And I, let's not throw this under the good content banner, but you guys deserve new, fresh stuff from us. And I appreciate all of you. And uh, I'm gonna make Micah do an extra good job next week so that she makes up for not being here this week and makes it up to me with some type of dinner, some type of steak dinner at some kind of keen steakhouse, hopefully. So we'll see if that happens. I doubt I can swing it, but it would be nice. It would be nice. Uh, Wilver Padua's number one fan says, watching this smiling down from heaven with Kobe and Osama bin Laden. Greetings and love from Dublin. As in Dublin, my little surgically implanted pig heart, twice its size over cute Timmy in the thumbnail. He knows what he's doing. That's right, bitch. And then their pig emoji and heart emoji. I'm always putting myself in the thumbnail good. Micah always is saying, she's like, I look like shit in the thumbnail. Why do you always pick a picture? I'm like, I think you look good. That's why I picked it. I picked that picture. And then she zooms in real close. No one ever looks good when you zoom in real close. And then she sends me a screenshot of it zoomed in real close. And I'm like, bitch, of course you look bad now. It's zoomed in real close. I don't look at the zoomed in. I just, I look to see if you're looking at the camera. Here's the thing. Micah, if you're listening to this, if you want a good, if you want a good thing, sit, look at the camera, smile at the camera, gesticulate like to the camera. Those are the ones I pick. I don't pick the ones where you're looking at the guests like this. I go when you're straight looking at the camera. That's what I pick. So do that from now on, Micah. God damn it. Uh, Wilfred Padua's other number one fan says, wait, the video is blurry. I thought my TV just looked like that because I busted my nut watching this. Oh my God. He sprayed the screen. And now it's a little blurry. Uh, I'm hoping this one isn't blurry. I think I did a good job of focusing it. Uh, If it is blurry, I am sorry. I'm just one man. I'm just one man alone, and I didn't put autofocus on because the autofocus fucks up too. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with this. It's going out either way. Oh, brother, you better believe it's going out either way. Uh, Fartist says, 
The last saw, time I saw a hang that great, I was riding a horse. My Lord, fart is. And then New Jersey Greg says, the last time I saw a hang this great, I was watching Boogie Nights, New Jersey Greg. My God. He is a star, though. He is a star. We all saw why he was a star. Uh, Chris and Fremantle says, Tim, Tim Plastic in your balls could be the cause of Micah's jizz appointment. Listen. Everyone gets jizz appointed with me, and I don't think it's the plastic. I think it's just because I'm I, I'm I'm just kind of a, a I was gonna say a juicer, but that doesn't work. I was trying to do like a jizz loser thing, and now I don't have Mike. Micah could have done it if Michael was here. That would have worked, or she would have dogged me for not for being stupid or something. But I don't know. Tom's good at that too. Maybe I should call Tom to car later, see if he can come up with something. The Patreon subscriber, of course. Alan Thicknick says, I like the thumbnail. Tim looks really good. The play in this episode was so fucking funny. Laugh emoji. Uh, and then they're saying that the uh, thing was a catfish. The Oh, yeah. that This one, because it was blurry, I took everyone's headshot and then I made a new. Um, so I did it with everyone's headshot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I took a, a, oh, shit. I took a template that was on um, Canva, and then I took everyone's headshots, and I put it on that. It did look good. It did look good. All right. Now we're on to our next episode with Mal Hall, Dashiki at the Fazoli's, and this thumbnail was the actual picture uh, so if you're listening to this, check it out. Check out our YouTube page. Go back to this one, Daishiki of the Fasolis. I took a picture of a white man in a dashiki with one of the worst wigs you've ever seen. His toupee is absolutely horrible, and it was at a Fazoli's in northern Indiana. So check that out. That's the thumbnail for this one. Um, I couldn't talk. I was so glad I still had the photo. If I didn't have the photo, I was about to be really upset. I'm about to chew ice. Chewing ice, chopping it up. Chomp, chomp. All right. Here we go. So this is Daishiki at the Fazoli's with Mal Hall. Sean from Pittsburgh says, I hope the Veil police can differentiate the bear and a black. Oh, my God. What the hell? There was a black bear on the loose. So I guess it makes the... <laughs> It makes the comment a little less racist, but there I go, not being able to read ahead and getting in trouble. Uh, Lori Smith says, I'm from San Diego. It's all Hispanics. Okay, I'm hoping that this does not keep up. Uh, and also, it's not all Hispanics. Uh, we know some white people that live there. Very few. They're in the Navy. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I've never been to San Diego. I'd like to go. I'd like to go. It seems like a nice town. One of the um, most dangerous airports to uh, enter into. I'm sure everybody does a fine job, but I think it's. I think the buildings are really close, and you're, they almost clip the buildings every time. Wilford Padua's number one fan says, when Irish eyes are smiling, I love this po pod more than I love my Al... Al Altasian, I think it's a type of dog, because uh, there's a dog emoji. Greetings and love from me and my Irish Rover from Dublin, Ireland. As in Dublin, the payment poor Timmy should have should have gotten from the Vale Comedy Festival. Shafters, that's right. Uh, that's on me. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take the fact that I got ha uh, my payment. Was, the payment we got was half of what we thought it was going to be, and I'm going to take that as a loss on my my end and use it as a learning experience. For the future, I fucked up. I should have uh, asked more questions. I should have done more research into figuring out how much we were getting paid. It just seemed like the amount, half of the, it just seemed like the regular amount was low, so half of that, I thought it couldn't even have been possible that that's what we were going to get. But, hey, what are you going to do? You got to take your lumps and keep on trucking, especially in this business where sometimes you drive nine hours and they don't want to pay you at all. And then you have to really get into it with them. Hold on one second. All right, I think we're good. I think I thought someone came into my house. Hughes on said hashtag goo gang. Sorry about that. I'm going to keep that in. I'm going to... 
All the silences are staying in because I have very little turnaround time for this. AJ Cook says the fact that you two and your guests actually get into a hor- actually get into the horrible play is amazing. I love it. And then Alan Thick Dick says, AJ, you know the plays are amazing. That's right. You know they're amazing. Actually, they have gotten better. I think that one was actually like not very good. But I have been really working hard on the plays. I'm trying to make it so that people can use their – they can see it in their mind's eye. They close their eyes. They can go to their mind palace and see exactly what's happening. And then I, of course, wrote horrible on all caps, question mark, and exclamation point. New Jersey Greg says, you all were funny as usual. Impressive with what appeared to be less than enthused audience, showing what pros both you and Mal are. Brother, I've been performing for less than enthused audiences for 14 years, and it literally has no effect on me whatsoever. I remember this weekend. So this weekend I did... um, I did a joke that always works. This joke literally always works. It works. It's worked every time for six years. And it didn't work this time. It didn't work. It just didn't work. And it's the first time it hasn't worked in like six years. I couldn't believe it. And I kind of stood there for a second. I go, "Uh uh-huh. And this was a set I had a bad one on. And it... And the comic we were working with in Grand Rapids, he goes, uh, did that throw you off your game? I go, no, it didn't throw me off my game. I just had to stand there and reassess everything I was going to do for the next 22 minutes. Because I was up there for 25 minutes. And when you open with a joke that basically always works. I have a string of like three jokes that I normally open with that always work. And when that falls flat and you've got 23 more minutes, you kind of have to reassess what you're going to do or just be prepared to bomb, baby, because sometimes you're just going to bomb. It sucks that it's going to happen, but sometimes you're going to do it. So you just have to, and and after that, I'm like, all right, be prepared to get heckled, be prepared to bomb the entire time. The audience was really nice. I ended up getting a few more good pops, but not. it wasn't the consistent... Laughter that I wanted throughout the show. Um, also, the audience there didn't really know what they were watching. So it was what not in Grand Rapids. The audience said for the podcast didn't really know what it was. I think they didn't know my uh, anti-religion, pro-Satan views. I don't think they really knew that. <laughs> um, Seth Miller says, Micah the Fox is my queen, and Tim is also my queen. Let's go. Uh, Glad to see all of the new guests, too. Splat, splat to all the DNA warriors. Splat, splat to you, Seth Miller. Thank you very much. Alex says, this one was remarkably funny. Wow, remarkably. Even the Timbo, even the Timbo's play rocked. Plus, I thought it's hilarious how y'all acted surprised that the comment section has become a goo fest. Yes, this is around the time when the comments had started getting very bust heavy. We had get, been getting bust heavy comments. Um, all you had to do was prop up Uncle Jemima's replies for the last couple months. Hey, that's what we did. We should have. I'm I'm sorry that we didn't do it earlier. I'm glad that everyone is popping off uh, jizz style to the show. I'm really happy about that. I love you all for watching. Thank you for thank you for shooting. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Burnout Bushido says, bricked up at work. Wishing I could let this lymph loose. Dear Lord. Oh, my Lord. Love the pod. Thank you, Bushido. Burnout Bushido. Uh, Ronson file says, is Tim wearing a duck man t-shirt? No, this is a, uh, this is a shirt I got at work. It's for, um, the duck, duck go. Uh, I got a bunch of duck, duck go shirts. It's a, it's like a, uh, it's like Chrome. It's like Chrome, but it's like, uh, safe or whatever. It's like encrypted or something. I don't know. I don't really know what it is, but I got a lot of the shirts cause we got them at work. So I have a bunch of duck, duck go shirts. 
If so, that's the most obscure thing I could imagine, and he deserves kudos. It would be cool if I did have a Duckman. I used to watch Duckman all the time on the USA Network when I would stay at my grandma's house because they had a room up at my grandma's house that had a TV, and the only channel it really got was USA. And I would turn it on at night because I thought her house was haunted, and I would just watch Duckman. And uh, so shout out to Duckman. Shout out to Jason Alexander. Uh, Duckman, apparently a bad show. I don't know. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Maybe I'll rewatch it to catch up. But apparently Duckman is not very good. Edit. I looked it up, and apparently it's Duck Duck Go logo. Oh, <laughs> god damn! If I read ahead, I wouldn't have had to explain all that bullshit for a minute. I will say that they ripped off their logo from the old USA Network cartoon Duck Man, that was voiced by George Costanza. Everything I literally just said—that's crazy, man! I do not read ahead. The only difference in the silhouette is that his hair is going the opposite direction. Yeah, so Duck Duck Go, uh, make things right with Jason Alexander, and um, I'd like you to make things right with me too. I've now looked like a fool. Because of you, Duck Duck Go. So, Duck Duck Go, I'd like a check sent to my house for approximately fifteen hundred dollars. I think I've suffered fifteen hundred dollars in humiliation, and I would like that sent to my house. You can get my address through a secure browser. Thank you. Wizard Adam says, "Goo Gang is coming for you." Is a slogan. Oh, I like that. Uh, and Al Al. Oh, jeez. You can't talk and you not talk. Sorry, I have to do Micah every time I buh, buh, buh. Alan Thick Dick says, damn, you guys busted out a bunch of these at the festival. All great episodes. Thanks for introducing me to some new comics. You're welcome. That's the thing. I like to bring on our friends for extra episodes, but I'm kind of, I kind of don't like that all of the bigger podcasts now aren't bringing on. And listen. Am I kind of not liking it because it they won't bring me on a guy with no followers? But they're only bringing on like the bigger podcasts now are only like bringing on people with a big following that people already know, so that people will click because they already know the people. No one's really introducing anyone new anymore. No one's doing anything for, and we don't have the following like that a Legion of Skanks does or like a Two Bears or like an Are You Garbage? But I think even if we did, I'd like to bring on people that people I hadn't heard of that are my friends that I think are really funny. And I think uh, I think a podcast should go back to doing that a little bit. Now, I haven't really looked as much. I know Real Ass Podcast does it, but they record three times a week. You're not getting big names three times a week. You record three times a week, brother, you're getting nobodies. And I'm happy to be one of those nobodies. I like to be a nobody on a podcast. So uh, I think some of the bigger podcasts should maybe try to spread their wings a little bit and give some more shots to the little guys. Try to prop up some of the smaller comedians and see if they can finally make some money in this goddamn fucking business, goddamn it. All right. Uh, so thank you for everyone for commenting on that episode. And now we're on to Aton Levine's throwing 50 first pitches. This is with Jewish comedian Aton Levine and Jewish comedian Micah Fox. And me, of course. Hughes on says, Jewish comedian Tim McLaughlin. Hughes on says, hashtag goo gang. Ronson Files says, 4220, this run on porn titles is gold, Jerry. Uh, 5422, wow, Tim breaking my cinema-loving heart with this uncalled-for slander of our beloved Ingmar Bergman. Listen, I got a dog, somebody. If if you're dead, if you're dead, I'm going to come at your ass. I'm going to come at you. Fuck you. You should have stayed alive, you piece of shit. Them's fighting words around these parts. Come get it, Ronson File. You know where I'm at. I'm in New York City. Come find me. I'm normally in Midtown. Um, Mouse Totten said, great episode and great seeing you in Chicago. You guys ruled. I wish we would have been able to say hi to you, Mouse. Sorry that we didn't see you. Uh, I'm glad you came to the show, and I'm glad you had fun. That was a show with uh, when we went to Chicago with Karen Fian, and I had to take the fucking bus, and I almost killed myself and others on the bus. Alexander Belmonte, shout out. What up, cheese? I don't quite, quite believe the Knicks gear was an accident. This man, listen, cheese, listen. Uh, Aton Levine is decked out either head to toe in Knicks gear 
or head to toe in Mets gear at all times. The man could not be any more Jewish or any more New York. He's a true New York Jew to the core. Uh, Seth Miller says, this podcast rules. Since I started listening to this, uh, since I started listening to this show, my salary has increased a whole digit. I grew an extra inch taller and an extra half inch in dick size, and my sperm count went down drastically. I don't want kids. Wow. These are all incredible things. This pot is helping people. We're really helping. Not to mention that I paint the walls white once a week. Whoa, Jesus, that I paint the walls white once a week. Thanks, guys, and splat, splat to all my fellow semen demons. Wow, that's incredible. Seth Miller, I'm glad for all the blessings that the pod has given you. And now for all of those blessings, you must send a tithe. You must tithe to the podcast. And I think $1,500 sounds about right. So, Seth Miller, get in contact with DuckDuckGo. Maybe you guys can make it an even 3000 that you send to me. I would really appreciate that. Alan Thickdick says, yo, pretty cool that he's doing 50 first pitches. Maybe he'll meet my cousin. He pitches for the Milwaukee Brewers. Wow. Who's your cousin, Alan Thickdick? That's really cool. And um, I he literally set the world record this year. Uh, so shout out to Aton Levine. Set the world record for most first pitches in a year by anyone at any at any professional ball ball game they weren't all fully at the show it wasn't all the major league baseball level but it was he did do you know some triple a games and stuff and he's thrown out the world record for the most first pitches in a year so that's pretty cool uh so shout out to aton for that new jersey greg says tim what do you think about teaming up with aton to write a porn I think I'll do it. I'll do it, goddammit. I've got ideas, brother. I've got ideas. Here's my first idea. Now, I don't know if this has been done before, but lady on top. So think about that for a second. That's one of my new revolutionary ideas. Um, We all have seen what an amazing playwright you are. Perhaps an AVN award is in the future. Yeah, maybe if we if we write the play lady or if we write the porno lady on top, the uh, sexual awakening of a woman from the bottom. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, and it was it's not very good. And sometimes here's the problem: when I'm by myself, sometimes my riffing is bad, and it's only sometimes. It's not every time, and I can hear Micah in my head going, "Oh, sometimes, almost like every time." So actually, I almost always do perfect riffs, but this was one of the rare times I didn't do a perfect riff. So I'm really sorry about that to you guys, and I apologize. And I'd like to make a statement now. As a man who prides himself on his perfect riffs and a man who goes out of his way to do his best for the listeners of this podcast and for the people that he holds dear in his life, I am sorry. I have made a fool of myself. I have made a fool of my family. And from the bottom of my heart, I apologize. All right, cool. Uh, Wizard Adam says, when I heard horse injury, I was thinking about a whole other thing. But I hope she's okay. Dear Lord, Wizard Adam. Um, And our last one from Sam Buckleaver is first. So there we go. That's all the comments from our recent episodes with Aton Levine, Mal Hall, Jenny Zagrino, Mary Mack, and Tim Harmstrom from the Vale Comedy Festival, which was really cool and fun to do. It was a good, fun experience. I know I got a little sour taste in my mouth, but we did have a lot of fun there, and it was a good time, and Vale is a very cool city. But now, we have to get to it. This week's comments with uh, our one of our absolute favorite people in the world, Irene Morales. What a fun episode that was. So I'm sorry if you guys have checked out already and you're not listening to this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this comments episode. We got a few comments left, and then I'll and then I'll speak ill of a dead person. Let me look up dead celebrities. Let's look up 1999, and I'll find one from here. All right, I already got one. Okay, cool. All right, so let's do it. Our this is our last bit of comments from. 
the latest episode, what, what did we call it? Podcasting from the Mind Palace with Irene Morales. And then after that, I'll speak ill of the dead, and then I'm out of here, baby. I mean, of course, I'll have to do my sign-off. But then I'm out of here, baby. Fick Rock says, I really enjoy this pod. Hope y'all keep going. Break the dry spell if you haven't already, by the way. We have not. But I have been gone, and Micah has been working so much that I don't even know if she knows how to sleep anymore. She's been working so much. Uh, and then Alan Thickdick says, I want Tim to sling more goo than Uncle Jemima. Dear Lord, I don't even think that's possible. Alan Thickdick said, Tim's being okay with living next to Auschwitz is Jeff Sheen levels of cheap. That's true. I think Sheen would be fine with it too if the deal was really good. I just, I think I've become unaffected um, in every way in life, I like nothing really bothers me. And I don't think I have any value for human life because I've been living in New York for six years and the people and people here, I mean, even like the nice ones, I'm just like, bro, I can't right now. Like, Oh, let's do a little spit that bit. So here's a bit I've been working on right out in the comments. If this is hacky, I don't know if it's hacky. Um, I don't think New Yorkers are rude. I because people come to New York and they're like, New Yorkers are rude. New Yorkers are not rude. People in New York move about their day, they move quickly, and they get to where they need to go. The rude people are the tourists. The tourists are always the ones that are stopping in the middle of the street. They're not knowing how to get stuff from a bodega. They're wandering around, looking up at things, not moving quickly with the pace of traffic on the sidewalk. It's the tourists that are rude. Now, if I were to go to a, if okay, say if I were to come to your house and you were trying to get into the fridge and I was just standing in front of your fridge, not moving, and you would get a little shitty with me because I wouldn't move from out in front of your fridge. It's basically the same thing. So that's like kind of what I'm working with with the bit there. It's one of my many premises I have written down and have not worked on. So that was a little thing there, and that was Spit That Bit. Uh, AJ Cook says, Irene, being a Tim fan, is so sweet. Finally, Tim has an ally. <laughs> It's true. Irene is my only ally, but Irene is also the nicest person in the world. So it's hard to have her as an ally because even though she did not have my back for the Auschwitz thing, which I said was a 50, 50 chance that she might not. So I was, I wasn't surprised that she didn't take my back. I also think you should do a likes challenge. If you get enough likes, Micah writes the play for the next week. I like that. That'll probably have to happen in the middle of September once Mike is done with all of these shoots that she's working on. But I do like that. I think, okay, so I'll put it out now. I think, um, I think if we can get in our next episode, if we can get uh, 75 likes, I think 75 likes, because normally we hover around 35 to 40. So let's not, let's not go crazy. Let's do 75 likes. If we do 75 likes, uh, Micah has to write a play for one of our upcoming episodes. She's not going to like that. I did this and that I promised this, but that's what she gets for not being here. Fuck her ass. You know what? Fuck you, Micah. You got a problem with this? Come home, honey. We haven't seen you. Come home. Quit hanging out with your big time famous friends and hang out with your loser boyfriend. All right. Uh, I like that though. Good idea. AJ cook. Thank you. Mouse Dodden said, Australia meme guy died. I know. I know he died. That's why I kept seeing the meme recently. God, he's so good. Um, barging into the segment, eat shit, Jack Carlson. Wait, how does he do it? I, I can't have a meal, a succulent Chinese meal. Eat shit, Jack Carlson. I hope your next meal is the devil's succulent limp penis, fucking bozo. Get your hand off my penis. God, dude, that meme is so good. That guy, that is, that is like truly an incredible meme. That I mean, it's it's better than a lot of animal memes, which is like really hard to do. Uh, Mr. Anderson says, the guest said, your fans rock. Micah said, no, they fucking crank. At that moment, I started cranking my rock till a gargantuan busting a until a gargantuan bust, and I haven't gotten soft since. Brother, you need to go to the doctor. 
As captain of the Slurm soldiers, ew, I request alliance with the Seaman Demons and Goo Gang uh, form a rescue mission for Uncle Jemima. That Okay, so you've heard it here first. Uh, Mr. Anderson of the Slurm Soldiers is calling on the Seaman Demons and the Goo Gang to band together. Put away your differences and band together to help Uncle Jemima. We'll see if it could happen. New Jersey Greg said, baby hippos over baby bears. My man, New Jersey Greg, I knew I liked you, brother. I knew you were better than Micah and Irene, dumbass bitches. Uh, Chris and Fremantle says, oh my heaven God, I knew it. Tim's mind palace is full of candy, which I haven't really had any candy since. Well, no, I had candy yesterday. Actually, I'm lying. I haven't had any candy today, uh, but I would like some. So I might go get some candy after this. Uh, Wilford Padua's other number one fan said, oh man, I guess my goo landed on my shoe. Forgot. Uh, because I forgot to comment how hard I busted last week. Well, uh, Wilfred Pato was other number one fan. I'm sorry that you forgot to bust. I'm glad that you busted last week, but you didn't let us know in here if you busted this week. So we would love to know how your bust was uh, at the Irene episode. So shout it out in the comments. So give us a comment on how you busted. And if you guys are busting to me solo, I, that's pretty cool. I would like that. I'm, I'm, I put on my Thick Boy Studios white tee. I got my butler hat on. I have not showered. I have a musk about me. So if that helps you, if that helps you to bust, I'd I'd love. I just want to help all my my. I want to help all my little semen demon slurm soldiers and goo gang bust as much as possible. Alex says, first of all, Irene rules. That is true. Great and funny guest on par with Jeff Sheen, and they used to date. And is that something? Next, just look at Micah's legs. Those gams are loaded. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, the bitch works out. She loves to do it. Ronson File says a minute and 40. Micah receiving effusive compliments must feel like hilarious torture. Um, and then what is this? Mantis. Oh, Dr. Mantis Toboggan. Why are you gay? Everyone knows it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I mean... I, but Irene didn't know it, but why are you gay is like, that is the meme for me. And it is, and you can find it in gift file on uh, Facebook messenger. And I've probably worn that bad boy out to no end. So I love that. That shit is so good. And then uh, who do we got here? Who's our last guy? Oh, Pluton. First, love you guys. Love you too, Pluton. Thank you for commenting. All right. And now it's time to talk shit about a dead celebrity and this celebrity died in 1999 a chicago film critic gene siskel eugene cal siskel died february 20th 1999 hey eugene cal siskel i used to go to your gene siskel uh movie theater when i lived in the south loop of chicago and it was expensive as fuck and also you i didn't like that you and roger ebert kind of looked like um the guys from uh, Bert and Ernie. You kind of look like the Bert and Ernie of fucking movie critics. Uh, you were a bitch. How about you get two thumbs down your damn ass from the motherfucking devil while you're roasting in hell, you piece of shit. I hope you're burning in hell getting butt fucked by the damn devil. And uh, that's it. Fuck you, Gene Siskel. I hope you're in hell getting butt fucked by the devil. Uh, so two thumbs down your butt. And that's it. That's the episode, gang. I hope that you really enjoyed it. I did my best to give you an episode that was mildly entertaining. I can't promise for anything more than that solo. I need someone here to annoy or else I'm like Superman under a red sun. And who is that for? My man, Jerry Seinfeld, of course. So I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. But before I tell you that, I've got to sign off. Signing off. It is Solo Pod Extraordinaire. They call me uh, the Bill Burr of Tim Dillening. It is Timothy Grady McLaughlin II. Shermit's uncle... Uh, your Patreon dad, patreon.com slash great hang, your free feed, best friend. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye. <laughs>